The top U.S. trade representative says it's time for the U.S. to play offense by pushing back stronger against China's unfair trade practices. Here's Catherine Tai testifying before the Senate Finance Committee earlier today. It is high time for us to turn the page on the old playbook with respect to China. That old playbook had us focused exclusively on changing China's behavior. We must now expand our work to um, include a strategy to vigorously defend our values and economic interests. The stern stance comes as Tai warns China has repeatedly refused to make real changes despite making commitments. She also tells senators that China isn't buying U.S. products as promised in the phase one trade deal. And to counter such a pattern, Tai says we can't just wait for China to change. Instead, the U.S. must make new strategic investments in key industries back at home. And that includes passing the Bipartisan Innovation Act, which will allow more chips to be made in America. And CIA Director William Burns has tested positive for the CCP virus. This according to an agency statement earlier today. The statement said Burns is experiencing mild symptoms and working from home, with plans to return to the office after five days and testing negative. The director is fully vaccinated and boosted. Burns last met with President Joe Biden on Wednesday morning in a socially distanced meeting. Chief Deputy Whip of the House Democratic Caucus Dan Kidley joined Congresswoman Angie Craig and Lucy McBath to rally support for their bill to reduce the cost of insulin. The Affordable Insulin Now Act, headed for a vote Thursday, would cap insulin costs for diabetes patients to $35 per month. The Affordable Insulin Now Act passed the House on Thursday. Chief Deputy Whip of the House Democratic Caucus Dan Kildee joined Congresswoman Angie Craig and Lucy McBath to rally support for their bill to reduce the cost of insulin. Nationally, uh, depending on someone's, the nature of someone's type 1 diabetes, the average sticker price for a month's supply is about $375. For some, it's $1,000. Lead sponsor Congresswoman Craig talked about the consequences of prices that are out of reach for many Americans. In fact, due to these soaring prices, many Americans risk their own lives by rationing doses or skipping treatments altogether. The bill caps out-of-pocket costs for diabetes patients to $35 per month. The companion bill, however, is stalled in the Senate. Remember all the talk about Hunter Biden's laptop? Well, now the president's son is under the microscope yet again, this time over his connection to the Chinese Communist Party. Bank records show Hunter Biden made millions of dollars from two Chinese businessmen. More than $5 million was transferred from a Chinese energy company to Hunter Biden's firm. These transactions were in 2017 and 2018. The records were laid out before the Senate floor this week by Republican Senators Chuck Grassley and Ron Johnson. The two senators produced a report that exposed connections between Hunter Biden and Chinese nationals connected to the Chinese regime and the Chinese military. Grassley said these records, quote, undeniably show strong links between the Biden family and communist China. Hunter Biden is still being investigated by the Department of Justice and so far has not been charged with any crimes. President Biden is not part of this federal investigation. The Federal Election Commission, or FEC, has fined Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign and the Democratic National Committee. It's because they did not properly disclose campaign spending on a former British spy behind the Steele dossier. The FEC says the money funded opposition research for the infamous Steele dossier, but it was misreported as legal services. The Clinton campaign faces an $8,000 fine, while the DNC faces a heftier punishment of over $100,000. The DNC and the Clinton campaign haven't made any comments, but they accepted the civil fines. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump said in a statement that this corruption is only beginning to be revealed, is un-American, and must never be allowed to happen again. As Russia invades Ukraine, there are a few subplots that have mostly been left out of the discussion, and for good reason. But as the dust starts to settle and we see what's playing out, some questions are starting to resurface. They include questions about the Biden family's ties to Ukraine, as well as former President Trump's first impeachment, and how it relates to the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Congress impeached Trump over a phone call he had with Zelensky. 
Mark Wayne Mullen from Oklahoma is calling for Congress to expunge Trump's first impeachment, and we had a chance to ask him about it. Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen, thank you so much for joining us on the Capitol Report. Appreciate you having me. Congressman, you introduced a, a bill just recently to uh, expunge former President Trump's first impeachment, which ironically was uh, related to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Tell us why that is. Well, when you start looking at what the uh, first impeachment contained, it was all about a phone call that was alleged that he had um, handled a situation wanting President Zelensky at the time to investigate uh, uh, the Bidens for what Hunter Biden was doing. And at that time, he was on the board of, at uh, Brisma as a uh, as a high paid advisor, which he had never been in the oil and gas business. And in 2018, you had Biden go out and brag that he um, told then the president of Ukraine that if he didn't fire the investigator, that he was going to withhold uh, military aid. Well, that was exactly what the Democrats were accusing at, accusing Trump of doing in the phone call. But when the phone call transcript came out, that never happened. He just asked him to look into it. Did this actually happen? Because you got to remember, Ukraine was uh, was ravaged at one time with with um, a corruption. President Zelensky ran on the fact that he wasn't going to allow that to continue. He was going to clean that up, and and President Trump essentially asked him to do that. Well, now you're seeing uh, Ukraine in a in a dire situation. Uh, the Democrats argued at the time that uh, that President Trump's behavior put Ukraine in a national security uh, risk. So what we're doing with the resolution is just simply saying, hey, uh, listen, Congress made a mistake. We impeached a, a president underneath Article One, Section Two, that uh, that shouldn't ever taken place because underneath Article One, Section Two, it gives Congress the House sole power for impeachment, and it says to do it so because of high crimes and misdemeanors. Neither one happened. Neither one took place. And so this is basically us through the resolution saying we got it wrong. The House messed up underneath the leadership of Speaker Pelosi and the Democrats who did this for political purposes, and we're going to correct that for history's sake. You have an American president that was impeached. I mean, that's a major deal, major deal. related to this uh, President Zelensky. And since the war started, we haven't heard much about it. And you would think that there would be some rumblings of something. Why do you think it hasn't been talked about? Well, actually, I think President Trump has handled it in the right way by not really inserting him in this situation. Uh, he could easily come out and say, listen, look how I handled this. Russia didn't invade Crimea underneath my time. That was underneath Obama. Um, Russia didn't advance into Ukraine underneath my reign. But since we had the leak sh leadership when we, when we had Obama in place and we had the weak leadership with Biden, Russia has now moved in. But as the president of the United States or um, the ex-president of the United States, he's, he stayed out of, the, um, out of the international affairs. And I commend him for that. that that's actually showing a lot of restraint because he could come out and have a lot of talking points based on the way the Biden administration is handling this. Do you think that the Biden's family's ties to Ukrainian oligarchs and Ukrainian energy companies uh, poses a conflict of interest? And um, for a lot of people out there that may not know about those ties, can you maybe elaborate on that? And is there a concern that the United States could be dragged into a conflict uh, for the wrong reasons? Well, absolutely. There, everybody should be concerned by it because there was no reason for Hunter Biden, who we all know about his problems uh, of, of drug abuse, uh, there is nothing that would say he was he would be in the position to be an advisor for Prisma at the time, uh, especially at getting roughly a million dollars a year. Other than his father was a vice president, uh, there was no reason for him to be able to sell oil leases to companies in Ukraine and and profit from that. That's a huge issue especially at the time when Ukraine was riddled with, with, with corruption. So I, I think there is a huge conflict. And then, you, then Biden's own words. When he was vice president, uh, of course, when he was talking in 2018, he wasn't vice president, but his actions when he was vice president by saying that if you don't get rid of the investigating officer before I get on this plane on Air Force Two and fly back, we're going to withhold military aid. That's, that's serious. Uh, now, and so I think there is a conflict of interest, interest, interest there. When you start talking about can, we, can it cause us to be dragged into a conflict, uh, I don't think those actions would necessar necessarily cause us to be dragged into a, a conflict. But when you have uh, the president, 
of the United States, and I sit on HIPSI, so we get briefed on a lot of the inter information that's happening, especially with the president's travel and what he's been briefed on and what the world affairs are going into our intelligence community. Um, we A lot of the information we receive is in the president's daily briefing. And for him to go out there and say that the 82nd Airborne uh, this is what you're going to see when you go into Ukraine, which we have never been briefed on any troops going into Ukraine. We've never been briefed on anything about President Putin being removed from power. And he goes out there one day and starts talking about the 82nd of going into Ukraine, which is a joke, a career politician trying to tell the 82nd Airborne what they're going to see when they get into combat. It's kind of funny. Uh, and then you go back and you see what President um, uh, uh, Biden said by Putin needing to be removed from power the very next day. That could draw us into a conflict. Congressman Mullen, thank you. Thank you, sir.